It gets less important the older you get. I used to like staying up late. Now I get excited to go to sleep. I'm nowhere near to be called old, but I'm starting to feel sort of like this. I don't mind staying up late if I'm meeting partying with friends or something, but I like the idea of hopping in my bed the more I further go into my 20s. And on the other side, I've started to very much despise waking up late even in the weekends because now I hate how short my mornings are if I oversleep. Enjoy your 20s, time flies. Thanks, I try to as much as I can, and damn it sure does fly, the people didn't lie when they said you'll start to feel it above 20. It's scary how fast it goes. I'm in my 40s and I can't believe my 20s were so long ago because it doesn't feel like it. Childhood seems to last forever, but adulthood just races by and before you know it, decades pass. I know when, if I make it, hopefully I will. I'm an old lady on my deathbed, I'm going to be thinking about how fast it all went by. What was the most erotic thing anyone's ever said to you? So, nothing sexual actually happened. But I was snorkeling at Silfra in Iceland. We had to put on dry suits to keep ourselves warm due to the ice water. Our French tour guide, who had been flirty up to now, had me demonstrate to the tour group how to put on the dry suit since I was the only tourist with a scuba license. When she gets behind me to put a collar around my neck to secure the face mask, she whispered in my ear, Is this the first time you've allowed a woman to put a collar around your neck in the most erotic French accent imaginable? Thank god I had a dry suit on or the whole group would have seen shifting in my pants. Yes it was the first, I hope to god it isn't the last. Where's the follow up? How did nothing come of this? No. I'm an idiot. Funny thing was, on that same trip to Iceland I had a boat tour with a German woman and we talked about completely innocuous shit for like 20 minutes before the topic of where I was staying came up. She then asked when I was leaving Iceland and I told her it was in a couple days. She then audibly went oh what a shame, I fucking did nothing about that. Damn you Asperger's syndrome. What is the world's most evil company and why? I am a little biased since I just saw Dark Waters but DuPont. I haven't seen the film but I work with PFAS contamination and can tell PFAS is going to be a major issue in years to come. My workplace is investing heavily in educating us on the chemicals and how to monitor and remediate them. It's so common that I have to check what kind of clothes I wear before working on site. A single drop from one of my coats completely contaminated as a sample. My neighborhood growing up had previously been a dumping ground of 50 gallon barrels containing PFAS and Teflon from a local shoe manufacturer. All of our wells sat on top of that. Almost every single person from the neighborhood I have kept in contact with has a host of serious medical issues. I remember being a kid and seeing the barrels in the woods. Glad I never fucked with them. There will be no consequences. Which is a decision you regret the most? My older sister texted me asking if I would want to chat on the phone while she was moving across the country. I was pretty tired from work and told myself I'll text her in the morning to see how the first part of her drive went. She passed away in a car accident that night. I regret not calling my sister. For all you know, it would have happened while you were on the phone and you'd have spent the rest of your life thinking it was your fault. Don't beat yourself up. There was no way you could have possibly known it was your last chance. What matters is that you were close enough that she thought of you when she wanted to talk. I'm really sorry for your loss. I hate to sound emotionless, but yeah. I don't want to imagine the pain of losing my sibling, but losing my sibling while I'm on the phone with them? I would require therapy for that. To be fair therapy is probably best either way, but yeah if I heard my sister die over the phone it would fuck me up significantly more. NSFW. How important is sex for you in a relationship? A large difference in libido can be a hard thing for a relationship to overcome. This. Healthy communication is your best friend here. My wife has always had a sex drive much much higher than mine. In our younger years it wasn't a problem. As we've gotten older, my mind is always willing but sometimes the body just won't play ball. I assure her it's not her. I still find her to be the most beautiful woman on the planet and my desire for her hasn't lessened. On the days my body doesn't wanna play we break out some toys. At the end of the day it's up to you and your partner to figure these things out and come up with solutions that work best for you both. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is spongy and bruised. A show has an intro that is such a banger, you wouldn't dream of hitting the skip button. Fucking Westworld has me staring at the screen in or at the start of every episode. Amazing intro am so catchy too. Same guy who did music for Game of Thrones. Consistently one of the best parts of the show regardless of how everything else went. Ramin Jordi is his name for anyone curious. Definitely recommend looking him up. I will also take this opportunity to recommend Sarah Shackner. His Painted Black from Westworld is one of the best things I've ever heard. DuckTales. The old one. And the X-Men cartoon. That Zman track still get me hyped. The one from Fox Kids? That slapped. Danalana laaa da dun danalana laaa da da danalana laaa da 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 na na. What is the weirdest thing that turns you on? 
The sound of duct tape my wife and I have this red sex tape stuff. It's not actually sticky but sticks to itself. It's used to tie her hands together or her ankles and it sounds like duct tape when you pull it off the roll. So if I'm ever at work or out anywhere where they are using duct tape, that sound gives me a insta boner. Congratulations, you pull off yourself. Next time my psychology teacher asks me for an example of classical conditioning I can say this. Please update us on your teacher's response. We will watch his career with great interest. Unintentional voyeurism. Flashes of flesh or underwear etc that you were not deliberately trying to see when she raises her arms and her midriff peeks out. I like it if the girl is wearing a leotard or bodysuit when they do this and the hip leg holes of their leotard peek out. Jesse Raspberry in FFVI remake has this going on. It's awesome. Without any side effects, what human bodily function would you remove entirely? Does tooth decay count? I hope so. Sitting here with a toothache struggling to think of anything I'd want more. This. I have a wisdom tooth that has fallen apart so badly I can plainly see it in a mirror. I had one crack and it hurt so bad I couldn't think let alone sleep. I was up all night trying anything I could to chill out the pain. As soon as the dentist opened I made an appointment and called out of work. The dentist shot me up into gums with a painkiller that didn't do anything to help. As soon as he pulled that tooth it was like someone flipped a switch and turned the pain off. I had so much hype about it, but was actually terrible. The 2012 apocalypse. The entire 2012 apocalypse was just bad logic to me. It was the end of the Mayan calendar. What's more likely, they predicted the end of the world or they looked at each other and said hey we're a thousand years ahead, should we call it a day and get some drinks? I had a professor in college who was of indigenous Mexican descent and someone asked her about the predicted end of the world, this was around 2010. Her response was well the Mayans were creating the calendar and expanding it out into the future, and around the time they were at 2012 there was a massive Spanish invasion and their society collapsed. That is just where they happened to be at that time, 